intermolecular forces are replacing this vague idea of stickiness that we've had up until now. And so if we're thinking of these forces as being how sticky a molecule is to its neighbor, it shouldn't be a surprise to us that the more sticky it gets, the harder it is to get away from its neighbor. In other words, the more polar, for example, a molecule is, the higher its boiling point should be. Because that's what we're doing in boiling. We're getting it to leave its neighboring molecule and pop off into the gas phase all by itself. We've got to overcome how well it was sticking to those neighbors in order for that to happen. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to compare five molecules just to get a feel for that trend. And you'll notice that in most of these we end up having three uh, atomic centers. We have carbon, 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 oxygen, carbon, 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 oxygen, and then carbon, carbon, nitrogen. And in this one we only have two central atoms, which is chlorine so heavy that you know it ends up being comparable in terms of its molecular weight. Now the reason we're looking at molecular weight is because we want to take away the issue of polarizability. And we want to be focusing purely on how polar it is. Now polarizability is telling us how easy it is to tug around the electron. Polarity is telling us where the electrons already biased toward. Now, if we go ahead and we put these up, and now I've got three-dimensional structures for each of these five molecules, you'll see that we have our propane, our three carbons, surrounded by a bunch of hydrogens. And so we're going to say it shouldn't have a big dipole moment, and it really, really doesn't. Notice here what we're saying is that it's 8 after we multiply it by 100. So this is actually a 0.00, I'm sorry, 0.08 Debye. It's a tiny little dipole moment on that thing. It's almost totally nonpolar. Now, if we look at its boiling point, we're going to be at 231 Kelvin. Now, let's go ahead and start putting on more dipole moment. For that, we're going to start swapping some atoms in and moving them around so that we start having the electron tug around a little bit. So you'll notice what we try to do is keep a set of molecules with pretty close to the same molar mass. Now, of course, if you're going to try to do comparisons, it turns very challenging to have a wide spread while having the exact same molar mass. So there's going to be a little bit of wiggle room there. But I'll emphasize for you in a minute that it shouldn't be too big of a problem, and I can justify it with the numbers that are there. So let's go to this next one, diethyl ether. Now, let's look at the structure. We have, notice, in this direction, the two are balancing each other out. We have a little bit of a dipole moment going in this direction. In this direction. So they're going to totally cancel each other out. Sorry, that's not an X in the center. Those are two arrowheads coming together. But when we go in this direction, we have a little bit, and all I'm doing here is I'm separating out the X from the Y axis, if you want to think of it that way. So I end up having a little bit of a dipole moment pointing toward the oxygen, but not a big one. And actually, so it's going to be at 1.3 Debye. And you can see that right here, 1.3 Debye. All right, so we finally have some polarity in that. I'm expecting that there's a decent little partial negative on that side, decent little partial positive on this side. So we have some of that stickiness starting to turn on. And notice what just happened to our temperature. We just went up by about 17 degrees in order to get that to boil. Now, going to the next one, methyl chloride. Here we have a really heavy chlorine atom, much more electronegative. We get a pretty big dipole moment along that bond, so we end up with a dipole moment of 1.9. You'll notice the temperature didn't really go up much for the boiling, but that's also because we just went up another four units, and we went to a much more polarizable atom, the chlorine. It's going to be a pretty polarizable atom compared to oxygen. Remember, oxygen is a pretty small atom. Chlorine is going to be down a whole row on the periodic table, a lot more polarizable. So what we're seeing there is a bit of both factors happening at once. Basically, in other words, we just bumped up the dipole moment. The only thing keeping the boiling point from jumping up a lot was the fact that the weight went up and it was a lot more polarizable. That's all that's keeping it together. Now let's go to the next one that we have here. Now we're back to something that's about the same mass as everybody else. But notice that with the way it's pointing, we end up having a pretty big polar arrow on this one and our polarity is going to be 2.7 uh, Debye. No, 2.69 Debye. Now we're up to 294 for the boiling point. It just really jumped up. How about this last one? 
We're up to 355 now. And our, our polarity is almost up to 3.9 Debye. It really jumped up, and that's because of that carbon-nitrogen bond that we have in acetonitrile. Remember, nitrogen is pretty electronegative. Carbon, middle of the road. That created a big dipole moment and really shot up our boiling point to the point where you can see that acetaldehyde, if I had this sitting in a beaker right there on my bench top in a lab, depending on if I have a cold day in the lab or not, that liquid could be boiling. Acetonitrile, it's going to stay liquid phase in our room under room temp conditions. It's probably going to be pretty volatile though. It's going to be evaporating pretty quick. And so we can start to make some of these predictions just by thinking about the shape of a molecule and how well it's going to be sticking to its neighbor. So that's the sort of process you want to be able to pull out of this. You want to be able to look at a three-dimensional structure. Remember, never a Lewis structure. You want to think of this in 3D. Decide what the dipole moment looks like, or if it has a charge, or if it has induced dipole capabilities, or whatever. You think through your intermolecular forces, you decide how sticky those intermolecular forces will be, and that tells you how sticky it is and whether it's not sticky and pops apart really easily. So those are the kind of things we're talking about for a boiling point and our molecular properties.